Sales are America's pride. Being part of the squad is prestigious, but only if you are capable of it. First, you have to pass the toughest test on the brink of human ability. These are men of nerves of steel and iron character. But among the SEALs, there is a squad that is shrouded in mystery and myth. Especially loudly about them started after the successful operation to eliminate Osama bin Laden. This legendary unit is SEAL Team 6. Today we're gonna talk about the history of their emergence, famous operations with their participation, as well as the brutal training program and selection of recruits. But first, friends, please help us reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers on the channel. We try to make interesting content, and the best thank you is your subscription right now. Haven't you subscribed yet? Then do this now. So how did this squad emerge? A little history. After more than 3,000 Marines were killed at the Battle of Tereva, the US military created the Naval Combat Demolition Units and Underwater Demolition Teams, the forerunners of today's SEALs, for better reconnaissance before invasion. After World War II, however, these units were largely disbanded. But beginning in 1950s, with the outbreak of the Korean War, the Navy again called upon the UDTS and rapidly expanded their activities. In 1962, as the conflict in Vietnam began to escalate, President John F. Kennedy established the first two Navy SEAL teams out of the existing underwater demolition teams. The term SEAL is an acronym derived from the words sea, air and land, representing the three environments in which naval special operation forces are trained to operate. At the peak of the Vietnam conflict, eight SEAL platoons were deployed in Vietnam and nearly 50 SEALs were killed between 1965 and 1972. In late 1980, after the humiliating failure of Operation Eagle Claw, the botched mission to rescue 53 American hostages seized at the American Embassy in Tehran. The Navy asked Commander Richard Marcinko to build a SEAL unit that could respond quickly and aggressively to terrorist crisis. Marcinko was a seasoned veteran who had served two tours in Vietnam, where he commanded the highly feared SEAL platoon and earned the Silver Star. He was given six months for the project, or it would have been cancelled. Although only two SEAL teams existed at that time, Marcinko called the new group SEAL Team 6 to confuse the Soviet military. Two assault groups, named after the navy color of blue and gold, formed the core of the group. The Blue Squadron, with a Jolly Roger pirate flag as its insignia, soon earned a reputation for recklessness while the Gold Squadron identified more with Knights or Crusaders. The men were drawn from across the US Navy Special Operations Forces community, with legendary martial arts master Michael E. Chenis brought in for training. Marcinka commanded the group for several years before leaving to form a new anti-terrorist unit, Red Cell. But in 1990, was convicted of military contract fraud and served for 15 months in prison. Also in 1990s, the Navy began updating and improving Team 6 leadership and operations, making them an effective weapon for the most risky and complex military missions. Since the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, Team 6 and the rest of the Navy SEALs have found themselves playing a more active role than ever. They conduct covert high-impact operations as well as ground reconnaissance and intelligence gathering before planned attacks by larger forces. Training and Selection all SEALs, without exception, are members of the US Navy and Coast Guard. Candidates are selected from volunteers, who are at least 18 and at least 28 years old. From the outset, the volunteers are subjected to a series of tests, based on which a panel of experienced psychologists and doctors conduct the initial selection. Next up, the recruits undergo a seven-week course of general physical training and specialized swimming techniques. They are trained to swim for many hours and in strong storms at any water temperature, even when the water is freezing, to swim with load and even while being tied up by their hands and feet. The goal is to train the combat swimmer to feel at home in the water like a fish. The following are nine ways of the first stage of the red combat training and life exercises with the workload becoming increasingly unbearable each week. For example, in the first week, the cadets must swim 300 meters in a certain amount of time. In the second week, the same 300 meters must be swum in full gear and equipment with all the gear and weapons. Then the same distance must be covered while holding a 40-50 kilogram load. 
in land exercises, the task is complicated by its structures, intentionally giving illogical orders that must be followed without hesitation. Hell Week is of particular note. It lasts only five days, during which cadets are allowed to sleep only four hours, standing up or up to their necks in a full-smelling swamp. At the same time, the workload increases every day and reaches such a limit that three instructors work with one group. One example is the storm test. At the instructor's command, the group lines up on the shore of the ocean, standing for 20 minutes, being showered with icy waves of the Pacific Ocean. Then on command, the entire group goes ashore and spends five minutes in the piercing autumn wind, then back into the ocean, and so on several times. Then comes a whole series of grueling marches in full gear, overcoming obstacle courses and so on. Instructors conduct psychological attacks to further exhaust the cadet's psyche and test their endurance. The dropout rate after the hell week is 50% of the total number of applicants and those selected for training. And the final dropout rate is 90% of the initial number. The final stage is air training, which lasts three weeks. Only then are those who have endured the truly hellish marathon allowed into the elite community. While many of DevGrew's operations remain classified, some have been confirmed and made public. Now we take a look at the most significant ones. Battle of Mogadishu DevGrew members participated in a multinational task force during Operation Gothic Serpent, the US-led mission to capture Somali warlord Mohammed Farah Aidid in the fall of October 1993. It culminated in the Battle of Mogadishu, which was later chronicled in the book Black Hawk Down, a story of modern war, and a subsequent film adaptation. Rescue of Captain Richard Phillips from Somali Pirates, 2009 Among the best-known SEAL successes of recent years was the rescue of Captain Richard Phillips, master of the merchant ship MV Maersk, Alabama, after four Somali pirates took him hostage in April 2009. Three of the pirates fled the ship in a small lifeboat with Phillips and headed for the Somali coast. When it leaked, as if the pirates were about to shoot Phillips, the crisis came to a dramatic end. Three SEAL snipers on the fantail of the Bain Bridge aimed and squeezed their triggers simultaneously, killing all three pirates in the bobbing lifeboat some 90 feet away. Details of the hostage rescue were later made public, killing of Osama bin Laden. 2011. By far the highest profile Team 6 operation and the most famous special ops raid in history was Operation Neptune Spear, which ended in the killing of Al Qaeda mastermind Osama bin Laden. The raid of bin Laden's compound was carried out by 23 or 24 SEALs. It took less than 40 minutes. As the role and importance of SEAL Team 6 has expanded greatly since 9 11, so has the danger. As the New York Times reported in 2015, more members of the unit have died over the past 14 years than in all its previous history. Repeated assaults, parachute jumps, rocked climbs, and blasts from explosives have left many better at physically and mentally. Thank you for watching the video to the end. Which unit would you like to hear about in the next episode? Give this episode a like if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video. See you soon!